Alright, so here you see the Aqualux fluid management system. You have the fluid management control unit that is the top box, and then the smaller box underneath that is the MyoShore control unit. You'll see the system underneath has the ability to hold four canisters at one time, and up top where you hang your saline bags, it is capable of hanging two three liter bags at one time. Uh, our system holds five canisters at one time and has the capacity of up to four or five liter saline bags. Here we are behind the system. I'm going to go over the suction and the canister setup. The system has an internal suction source, which means you do not have to plug it into the wall suction. So, and that suction source is split into two sides. There's a low side, which is your white side, and the high side, which is the green side. The low side is 125 millimeters of mercury of suction, and the high side has a maximum of 500 millimeters of mercury of suction. That is regulated over here. You can turn the suction down or you can turn it up, uh, but it does not display what your suction actually is. And for the canisters, the low side goes down to the rear left canister, connects to the vacuum port, and then tandems up to the front, and this will be connected to the underbody straight. And then the high side is connected to the vacuum port on the rear right canister and tandem up to the front where you see the specimen trap, and that is what is connected to the MyoShore tissue removal device. All right, so here we are at the front of the Aqualux system, and we're just gonna walk through the steps and the display. So step one, we're gonna turn the system on and it's gonna run through its checks and you're gonna see in the information center over here, it's gonna give you what the system's doing while it's doing it. System's okay. And now it's going to begin prompting you to go through the steps and step one would be to insert the tube set. So before we do that, we'll go over what the display means. Uh, 80 millimeters of mercury right here is your default interuterine pressure setting. Has the ability to go as low as 40. 40 is as low as it'll go and then it has the ability to go as high as 150 millimeters of mercury. Now when we get to 100, just like with our system, we're gonna take it past that. It's gonna beep at you. When the beep goes away, you can take it all the way up to 150. The zero here is what your actual inner uterine pressure is in the cavity. 1,000 milliliters is your set deficit limit. So that's when your perforation alarms will begin to sound. It goes as low as 800, will not go lower than that and it will not go higher than 2,500. And lastly, you have your actual deficit. So the fluid that has not come back to the system will be displayed right there. And you'll notice that there's no total volume number that's on display here, like it, there is on our system. In order to see that, you would actually need to depress both of these buttons at the same time and hold them. And where it says zero, there would be your total volume. Okay, now we're ready to run the tube set, and you'll notice on the side you have your pump wheel in your spot to insert the transducer or the inflow tube cassette. The tubing comes in two separate sterile packs. You have your inflow tubing here, that is your inflow tubing, and then your outflow tube. The tubing has been removed and we're going to connect it to the scope. So now we have the scope tubing connected. The inflow tubing with the blue female lure lock will connect up top here to the inflow. And then here's your diagnostic outflow channel that is inserted through the scope where your outflow tubing will go during the diagnostic portion of the hysteroscopy. On one end, this is what connects to the underbuttocks drape. And then on the white end is what will connect over to your canister or the white side where the low suction is. Okay, so I've got the white tubing that is connected to my under buttocks bucket there, connected over to the low suction side or the white side, and don't have tubing connected there, but that is where the MyoShare tissue removal device tubing would connect on the high suction side or the green side. So the next step would be to insert the inflow tubing cartridge. This is your inflow tubing cartridge or transducer that will be inserted into the pump wheel. And on each of these, there is an RFID or radio frequency identification that makes it so you can only use an inflow tube set once. So once the machine is turned on and this has had fluid running through it, it will no longer be able to be used again. 
All right, so we're ready to insert the cassette. We'll just line up the arrows, inserts in just like that. We will then wrap the tubing around the pump wheel and it will seat in like so. And now you heard a beep and it was telling that we should press the prime button. All right, so it's time to prime the pump. I spiked the bags, opened up the clamps, and I began priming it. It said prime pump up here, but I paused it and I'm afraid to turn the system off because I don't have another inflow tube. But you would press the prime button and now we are calibration running. Cycling through some fluid. Should be coming out of the scope. Just shot my iPad, sorry. And still saying calibration running. Prime successful, pump operating. So we've closed the inflow stopcock. And then the final step, zero out the pump. So you're ready to begin the procedure now. So the pump is now operating. It's turning, that starts going up, some of the fluid's coming back. Fluid coming out of the distal end. Now as opposed to our system that will go automatically into a bag mode when it senses a vibration for the changing of a saline bag or any of our canisters, with Aqualex you have to manually pause the system to make any changes to the bottom or to the bag above. Um, the suction has stopped and more importantly, the pump has stopped. We'll start the pump again. And like our system, this pump is sensitive to any vibrations. So right now, the pump has just turned off. I'm gonna start the pump again. And it sounds like we're running out of fluid. We just went over the thousand liter deficit, so you heard the deficit alarm go off. And the pump has now run out of fluid. And you'll notice the deficit number is still climbing. Even though no fluid is being pumped in right now, the deficit number is still climbing. The reason the deficit continued to climb on the Aqualux pump, even though the fluid had run out, is due to the fact that it's a volume-based fluid monitoring system. There are two types of fluid management. There's weight-based and volume-based. Smith & Nephew fluid management system is weight-based, which means that the fluid leaving the system is actually weighed on its way out, rather than, like Aqualux, measuring the revolutions of the pump wheel. So every revolution of the pump wheel on the Aqualux pump, it will account for 13 cc's of fluid going into the patient, thus making the deficit climb because none of that fluid is coming back because it was never actually leaving the system. And so if you look to the bottom of the page, that directly affects the accuracy of the pump itself, from flow rate to the pressure to the most important, the deficit. Plus or minus 10% with Aqualux, and then a plus or minus 3% with Smith & Nephew. So I turned the system off and turned it back on and just to demonstrate how the RFID works. I'm trying to use the same tube set now. And you see it says tube set over usage limits.